Sir Christopher Chope. Madam Deputy Speaker, it's a pleasure to uh, move the second reading of the COVID-19 vaccine damage bill, which is a very hot uh, topic, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to do justice to it in uh, 23 uh, minutes. But um, I, I start off with the proposition that those of us who have been double jabbed with vaccine against COVID-19 must count our blessings if we've not suffered any adverse consequences. And I am happy to include myself within that category. This bill is about all those who have suffered injury or even death as a result of enlisting in the war against COVID by being vaccinated. The numbers affected are relatively low, which is all the more reason why the government should not be playing hard to get in relation to the compensation scheme for those who do suffer adverse consequences as a result of having done the right thing. The government has produced quite a lot of information about the amount of vaccine, the extent of vaccine uh, damage. And uh, some of that is um, set out um, in the documents which the government produces in relation uh, to those who have applied uh, for compensation or have notified under the yellow card uh, scheme. And essentially, what the yellow card scheme shows in the most recent report, which came out, I think, on the 9th of September and covers the period from the 9th of December up until the 1st of September. It shows that there have been 435 reports of major um, blood clots and low platelet counts, including 74 deaths. It shows that there have been 767 cases of inflammation of the heart a condition which is almost unheard of in medicine on a normal day-to-day -day basis. It shows that there have been some 35,000 reports of menstrual disorder, and there are all sorts of other um, effects which are set out in the comprehensive report. But it also, I think very worryingly, says that there are 1,632 reports of deaths having taken place shortly after vaccination. And I think if we're building, trying to build vaccine confidence, we need to actually ensure that we're open to the, 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 with the public about the facts. And that's why I was very disappointed when I asked the Secretary of State on the 7th of July um, if he, what, is, what information his department holds on the number of deaths that have been reported of people who have died within one month, two months and three months of having received a COVID-19 vaccination since the 1st of January. And uh, uh, yes, but perhaps it'd be more convenient if I actually read out the answer uh, that the, um, we received from the, the minister. And he said, data on the number of deaths reported of people who have died within one, two and three months of having received the COVID-19 vaccination since the 1st of January is not available in the format requested. Public Health England monitors the number of people who have been admitted to hospital and died from COVID-19 who have received one or two doses of the vaccine and will publish this data in due course. That data has not yet been published. And I think it's very important uh, that uh, we are able to put this issue uh, into context because there's a lot more damage being done to our citizens as a result of COVID-19 vaccinations than in any other vaccination programme in history.